The opportunity to make this film look and feel like the original comics by Peo, that was one of the challenges and one of the delights about doing this film. We wanted to honor those integral parts of Peo's work. To change that and to try and improve on that, I believe is an impossible task. And why do it? Why not make something that is as close to the source material as we can get it? All those people that love the Smurfs love those Smurfs. We don't want to give them something else. Our production designer, Noel Triojo, worked hard to make every piece of the film feel as if Peo himself had designed it to capture the look of those comics, which, being French, she had grown up reading and seeing as a child. Everything has a quaintness about it and a childlike scale to it that I think keeps the world appealing and fun. There is a sense that you're down there smurf size with the characters and everything in the world is a little bit bigger than it should be. Whenever a character got hurt, particularly Gargamel or Azrael, there are these pain stars that show up. We put that in the film. We wanted that to be something that just made something hurt just a little more. Throughout the movie, there are little special nods we gave to the original Peo comics that only the most devoted Smurf aficionado will probably notice, but it might mean a little extra to them. If you look closely in Farmer's Farm, there's a scarecrow from the comic King Smurf, uh, which played an important role in that story. In Brainy's house, you'll see a glass jar with the blue bug fluttering in it. Uh, that's from another story. The trilipsophon, if that's how you pronounce it, um, is buried in the dirt in one scene as you pass by. So you have to look fast, but you'll see them, and if you know what they are, you'll catch them. Each environment has a certain look to it that tells you something about the characters who live there. Smurf Village is brightly lit and soft shapes, and the characters that live there are nice and gentle and, generally speaking, harmless. Then you go to Gargamel's lair and its angles and shadows and almost a German expressionist quality to it. All these things play a part and it gives each world its own character. Patrick Matei is a character designer that I've worked with on several other movies in the past. He's brilliant and he also happened to be a huge lover of the Smurfs. His youngest memories are drawing the Smurfs and he is able to capture them with complete accuracy. So accurate, in fact, that Peo's daughter, Veronique Culliford, saw drawings of Patrick's. It brought tears to her eyes. What bigger compliment could Patrick have had? You know, all of our new characters, Snappy Bug, uh, Bucky, the Glow Bunny, they're all derived from shapes and design styles from Peo's comic books. The eyes are joined, there's no skin between the eyes. When a character has a surprised expression, you'll see the eyebrows move up above the hat. Smurfette's eyelashes are just little ink lines. We tried for that shape. All of these things help it to look like a Peo world. Many people internationally grew up enjoying the Smurfs before the Smurfs even came to America in the mid 80s. So there are a lot of people working on this film from all over the world who have a special affection and love for the Smurfs and wanted to see this film pay homage to that and be true to that. I'm very proud of the technical team that helped us achieve that and everyone who played a part in bringing those elements together to create what we ended up with.